Institutional holdings, governments, ETFs, exchanges now hold 4.23 million Bitcoin. What does that mean for the market? Let's jump into the news for today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, yes, my name is Didi. And no, I am not wearing a disguise to hide myself from other people. I have this wound to my eye and I just want to protect it to the sun and just don't want to be like very like scary movie facing on this camera. I had a choice this morning. Wake up and not make a video when I saw it, it was really red. As you can see that here over there is really red. Uh, or just wear sunglasses and protect it from the sun and also don't look too scary. I chose the second one, guys. In today's video, guys, I have five amazing Bitcoin charts and real amazing Bitcoin charts. Believe me when I say amazing Bitcoin charts, they will be amazing today. Yes, also a crypto tab, also talking about the news, of course, answering the question of one of the followers and yes, ending it with an inspirational quote. So let's now quickly jump into the news to show you exactly what is happening in this industry and how it will influence the market. Bam. The biggest news from today is that all those centralized entities like governments, like exchanges, like the spot ETFs, all of those now collectively hold 4.2 million Bitcoins, which is 27% of the circulating adjusted supply, guys. So there's a shit load that is now in control of governments, of countries, of banks, of spot ETFs. 4.2 million, 27% of this industry already is in control of those. I don't know if I'm really happy with this. You know, I am still this freedom fighter in this industry, this maybe peaceful anarchist guy that really believes that Bitcoin can do better for the world if it is in the right hands, the hands of the people. I don't believe in the hands of centralized entities, governments and all those people because they have been screwing us for the last decades, not for the last decades, for the last ages. So why would I now trust them with my precious Bitcoin? I am just completely different. I just don't trust those governments, guys. So for me, it's very important that Bitcoin stays in the hands of the people. And the only way to get Bitcoin back to the hands of the people is if you all start collectively buying. Don't have weekends, don't sell your Bitcoins to those governments, to the shitty people. They only want to do bad things with Bitcoin. We need to keep control. As long as we use our currency, we will be in control. The moment you use their currency, they will be in control. And if they would make Bitcoin their currency, then that will be a big problem in the far future, guys. So let us collectively understand this and fight for the rise, the fundamentals and the freedom of Bitcoin. We must not have Bitcoin contained in all those centralized entities. That is terrible, guys. It needs to be of the people. For the people, by the people, of the people. That's all. But as we look now, the Spot ETFs own already 862,000 Bitcoins collectively. That's a shitload of Bitcoins already in centralized Spot ETF hands. Then the Mt. Gox trustees, they follow up with 207,000 Bitcoins and 147,000 Bitcoins also a shitload of bitcoins hopefully they will flow back into the hands of the normal people and that mount gox is going to distribute it back to the normal people so that we'll keep those bitcoins in the hands of the normal people and not again into the hands of those centralized entities the miners while well, excluding satoshi nakamoto's bitcoins hold around 700,000 bitcoins at the moment and all the exchanges collectively hold 2.3 million which i still also believe that is in the hands of the people. So yes, of course, the title was shocking. And of course, yes, my intro was shocking because it's still for the 2 million Bitcoins that is in the hands now of centralized entities. But luckily, a huge part of that is still Mt. Gox trustees, so probably normal people. And of course, 2.4 million on the exchanges like Bybit or Blowfin or Kraken or Coinbase. But they are centralized entities, but at least we as people hold our bitcoins at those centralized entities and we still have the right to withdraw them if you want to sign up by the way to buy it use the link down below at the moment the bonus up to thirty thousand us dollar and a beautiful campaign for one hundred thousand us dollar and use the team for the grabs a blowfin at the moment also a sign up bonus of ten percent and also there guys if you use my link to sign up to blowfin you can win some special prizes like a rolex like an apple vision pro like macbooks like earpods like all of that stuff if you use my link to 
sign up to Blowfit now. And yes, these are centralized entities, and yes, they hold your Bitcoin, but at least you still have the possibility to, to withdraw them as well if you want. That's not the case for the banking system, I think, uh, and other heavy centralized systems. But the news for today is that 4.2 million Bitcoins are in the hands of centralized entities, and we should make sure that the majority of all the Bitcoins stays in our hands, in the people's hands. That is the most important news I can share with you today. Which also leads to the second news for today that also will influence the charts because I just told you we need to keep those Bitcoins out of the hands of all those centralized people. But what is happening, all those centralized people understood by now that Bitcoin is the gold of the 21st century. Now even the biggest Chinese bank, which is one of the biggest banks of the world, just admitted, hey, Bitcoin is the gold of the 21st century, Ethereum is the oil of the 21st century, we are gonna start to include Bitcoin and Ethereum in the portfolios of our traders, of our investors, and also of the retail clients, they will get access now to Bitcoin with that bank account. And to be clear, that ICBC, the Industrial Commercial Bank of China, is not only the biggest bank in China, it's the world's largest bank with over 6.6 .6 trillion US dollar. They manage 6.6 .6 trillion US dollar. It is the biggest bank of the world and they just announced in their newsletter and admitted that Bitcoin is the gold of the 21st century, Ethereum is the oil of the 21st century and they're going to play a very important role in the economical system in all the world, also in China guys. This is huge news. This will lead to massive adoption, of course, in China as well. And we know that China is one of the richest countries of the world, so a lot of liquidity again will flow into Bitcoin and of course also into Ethereum and maybe also other altcoins, shitcoins, meme coins, everything else. But the industry will suck up more and more liquidity the more the centralized entities agree with the normal people. Hey, yeah, Bitcoin is good. And the more the centralized entities start to promote Bitcoin, the more those sheeple people, you know, the sheeple, they always trust the banks and the governments that talk like, meh, meh, those people, you know, those people, they need to hear it from the bank. They don't need to hear it from me, from a long haired dude with sunglasses on the beach somewhere in Spain. They don't care about my opinion. They don't care about any other influence's opinion. They only care about their government's opinion, about the bank's opinion. What they say is right. So if all those banks and all those governments now start to say, yes, Bitcoin is okay. And then Trump in America says, yes, we're gonna be the biggest miner. And then the Chinese biggest bank of the world says, yes, we are gonna see Bitcoin as the goal of the 21st century. That is the moment that all those sheeple also will start to understand Bitcoin and accumulate Bitcoin and hold Bitcoin. This is bigger than most people think. This is gonna to lead to a huge inflow of liquidity, guys. And yes, it's all small baby steps. Banks admitting, governments admitting, huge companies admitting, like spot idiot. But those baby steps collectively will lead to worldwide mass adoption of Bitcoin as a store of value and probably also as a peer-to-peer -peer cash for those that really understand that Bitcoin should be their core capital that they can use to spend while it is a store of value. Now let's quickly jump into charts to see if the positive news also has a positive influence on the Bitcoin price. Bam. The first chart for the day, guys, is this four hour chart. On the four hour chart, we can see again bottoming out here in this red area. Yes, we had a beautiful run yesterday. I will show you soon in a smaller time frame. But at the moment, we bottomed out again here at a 67k level. We tried to break 70k level again, didn't succeed. Um, there is some candles closing above that yellow stepping lane, but it was a lot of blue in the bottom, so that's not a valid trade. Uh, you know, the white line was really flat, so I wouldn't have taken that trade on the four hour. Yes, I took a trade on a shorter time frame, but I will come back to that later, guys. Um, you can see on this chart, very simple, the biggest area of resistance at the moment is here, this level of 71K. The first level of resistance, guys, on the chart, we can see over here, the 69,500. We need to be able to break that to go to that next resistance of 71,000 US dollar. These two levels are the levels that we have been fighting now over and over and over again. You can see it over here, trying to break that 71K level, didn't succeed. Fell down here, 
fell down lower, on a break that one again, we don't succeed. These are important levels. We need to start breaking these for Bitcoin to go in the second part of the explosive part of the bull market top. But the thing that you also need to understand, when it's so boring for Bitcoins, like sideways movement from like 67 to 70k, that whole period of sideways movement is also building structure. Building structure of the previous run. And the previous run, let me see over here, if we can see, I will switch up all the indicators. Like if you look how Bitcoin moves every time, it's the same, guys. Look, we go up explosively, we go sideways. We go up, we go sideways. We go up, we go sideways. And these sideways movements, the longer they take, the more structure is being built on that run that we just had. And that structure is very important for Bitcoin to create another run. So this sideways boring movement that's already taken out from the 4th of March, for example, all the way here till June, that's from March that's to April to May to June, that's three months, that's 90 days, that is pretty normal. We have seen sideways movements of 100 days before we went and took off. So it's not too bad what we see on the chart at the moment. Short term, beautiful volatility to trade. Now, if we just zoom out to the daily chart, you can see this move uh, even a bit better, how it plays out every time and again and again. Look, these runs over here, you, know, you see the run, then we see a sideways movement. We see a run, we see a sideways movement. Then we will see a run, and then there also, again, we will see a sideways movement. It's just how Bitcoin moves, guys. It's not the end of the bull market. You are just getting started. Also, guys, if you look, for example, at that blue and that green line on the chart, those are also very important. Mostly when they like cross each other, the, the, the green down below the blue, that's mostly bearish. But the moment that that blue line starts to cross that green line again, like for example over there, we see these parabolic runs before we go sideways again. And then that sideways movement, oh, green is going down below the blue one and sideways, and green is going down below the blue one. The moment we cross over again, we had a parabolic run. Then the line crosses down that blue line. Ah, it's going sideways again. Now, at the moment, if you look very close, we are about to go and cross each other again. That green line tries to go up, try to break the blue line. When it crosses again, I expect another parabolic move. Just how Bitcoin moves. Let's quickly jump into some more interesting charts. This is the first one, guys. This is uh, comparing 2017 to 2014 because I also believe that those runs will be the same. I do believe this bull market will be a blow-off top, not a distribution top like last bull market, double top. This will be a single of blow-off top. Now, if we compare 2017 to 2024, we are kind of moving the same way, but in a slow down version. In 2017, this move took 50 days. Now this move is taking on already 100 days. So the market is slowing down, but we can see that the move is kind of the same. And we can also see that after that move finishes in this box, we will have a massive run. And that massive run was there also in 2017, will also be there in 2024. Cool fractal found, I don't know by who, but I found this chart on Twitter, guys. Then we have this chart. There's the four week chart. So you can see here in the top left, it's a four week chart. Every candle is four weeks. Now, the thing that we need to see on this chart is when that blue line comes above that horizontal yellowish line, there's a bullish sign. Here it was, but this is the beginning of Bitcoin. Here it was in 2013. That blue line came above that yellow line. That was the start of this massive run of four week candles. In total, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen four week candles. So, thirteen candles of four weeks is in total, yes, 52 weeks, a year of bullish movements in Bitcoin. Now, when it happened again here, 2016, that blue line went above that yellowish line, again, the same thing bullish moves only. In total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 four-week bullish candles. 18, that's 72 weeks. 
of bullishness. It's a lot of bullishness, guys. Now, from that moment, we didn't see that blue line above that yellow line anymore. A whole long period. Even in this previous bull market, we didn't see that. And that indicates that every time when that blue line crosses that line, we get a blow off top. The time we don't cross that line, we don't get a blow off top, but we still have a bull run. Now, look to what is happening today. That blue line just crossed that yellow line. This is an indication to me that this bull cycle will be a blow off top. That this four week candle chart is that we will at least see 12 more months of bullishness. Yes, four week candles is also a monthly candle for all those people that didn't realize that. But yes, indeed, it's around 12 more monthly bullish candles, which will lead into a blow off top just because if we compare it to the past, every time we did that, we had a single blow of top, a single, single blow of top, a single blow of top. This was a distribution top. We will have a single blow of top this run. And then the last shot for the day, guys. Um, now, at the moment, Bitcoin is about to leave the 0.5 line on the MZ BTC bottom indicator. I found this on El Crypto Props Twitter. Beautiful chart. Um, this only happened three times before. Three times before, guys. In 2012, the candles took a distance from that 0.5 line. Massive bull market. In 2017, the candles started to take off of that 0.5 line. Massive bull market. In 2020, yes, when that happened, massive bull market. And now again, we are around that line. When we leave this line, massive bull market. And if the top will only be like 130k, like you can see on this chart, or maybe it will be 160k, we still need to see it. Because the moment these leave that line, you can see the top line is increasing as well. So this top line will be increasing as well. And that will give us a beautiful bull market top of above 100,000 US dollar. As I always say, between 120 and 160 is my target. But let's see what will happen. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, short term. Of course, again, a beautiful setup to trade. I told my VIPs, hey, I'm going to take a very high risk rate uh, because I see this V-shaped bounce coming up. Yo, I took the trade. And yes, I made a shitload of profit. You can see uh, over there, I think 66% or something. But that's a good profit, I think, for a couple of days. So yes, if you want to become a little bit better at trader or like join a community with a lot of traders and other people talking about Bitcoin, blockchain and life, you could join the Bitcoin family VIPs. Uh, you go to our websites and you will find all the steps that you need to take, guys. Now, long term, those charts are really impressive, especially the one where we are leaving at 0.5 line, which only happened three times before in history. Three times before in history. And each of those times when we left that line, we went into a massive parabolic run. I will have another chart in the crypto tip after this one. That is also very impressive, also showing us something really beautiful is ahead of us. So keep watching this video. Now let's jump into this crypto tip to show you that amazing chart as well. The crypto tip for today is the magic bands. You can find that indicator online. And this indicator is telling us that yes, the next level should be around 91,000 US dollar and the top of the bull market should be somewhere around 120,000 US dollar. Just like I've been saying all the time between 120 and 160 if we get a blow off top. But this model is telling us, hey, don't be too bullish. Don't go for those 300 Ks and that 500 Ks and those million dollars that everybody is promising you. Maybe 120 K will be the top. Magic band indicator, as you can see on this chart over here, has predicted the bottoms and the tops in the previous cycles. At the moment, we are finding the 2.5 line level. The moment we break a 2.5 line level, if you look to the left on this chart, you can see an explosive run happened every and each time to the top line. And the top line at the moment is 120,000 US dollar. Maybe it will increase a little bit during time, but those levels we need to keep an eye on. So if I'm always talking about profits, you should be dollar cost averaging out of Bitcoin near the top, not at the exact top. So maybe sell 10% at 90K, sell 20% at 100K, sell another 20% at 110K, and maybe then another 10% at uh, 120K, and maybe then keep the rest for if you go to 180K. But you need to take profits somewhere. 
And if you really, really, really believe in Bitcoin, like really long term, like I've been believing in Bitcoin since 2013, if you really believe that Bitcoin is going to be the new world reserve currency, the new digital gold, the store of value of the 21st century that you can use as a peer-to-peer -peer cash, if you really believe that, then you just hold all the biggest part forever. Then you don't take any risk with trading or exchanging or whatever it is. I love the game of trading. I try to multiply my Bitcoins by that because I just love to keep those Bitcoins out of the hands of centralized entities. I want to have them and I want to use them to spend them all over the world at stores and everything just so that people get control of Bitcoin. So that's my vision, but no, who am I? You can also just use it as an asset and make profits. That's also a possibility. Bitcoin is the best asset out there, the king of assets. So yes, guys, the crypto for today is that magic band indicator. The level three, I think, is around the 91,000 US dollar. And then we have the level four, which is around 123,000 US dollar at the moment. Just check the indicator if it's useful for you. Uh, of course, you can also just subscribe to this channel because I will keep you up to date with all these indicators, with all these models, when the top will be nearing, guys. Today, guys, I'm going to answer three questions of the followers because it was three questions that I really liked and I'm like, okay, I'm going to answer them because they are not too long, those answers. The first question of a follower was, Didi, why do you bother with all the short-term trades? Because one, I like the excitement of this industry. I like the excitement of trading. You know, some people love gambling. Some people love fishing. Some people love football. I love the excitement of putting a trade predicting if it goes up or down and then being right at the end and then taking some profits. Like you saw over here, bam, 66% profits. That's a beautiful profit that you can take. I am multiplying my Bitcoins while I feel this cool tension of being in a trade. Just I love that feeling of being in a trade and like being able to make profits uh, just by looking at charts and by just opening a trade, for example, on Bybit, Blowfin or Apex Pro. I can make more Bitcoins out of my capital without depending on anyone else. That is why I'm still trading short term. I just love that game. The second question, guys, is a very often asked question and it was, Didi, how do you pay for flights? How do you pay for food if you don't have a bank account? Please wake the fuck up. We are traveling already now for eight years around this beautiful world with a family of five bankless seven years on bank to be very honest because the first year we still had a bank revolute but after that bam all of them were gone so how do you think a family of five can survive seven years of traveling to 42 countries without a bank account if it is not possible it is possible but you need to dig a little bit deeper into this industry to understand the possibilities for example booking flights booking apartments booking hotels all possible through direct Bitcoin payments or any other cryptocurrency payments, for example, on Travala.com. Just check that website, Travala.com. You can book flights, you can book houses, apartments, everything directly with Bitcoin. There is way more travel sites, Bitcoin flights, Bitcoin trade. There's so many websites where you can book all your accommodation and flights already directly with Bitcoin that I just don't understand why people still use other services. That's first. Second of all, there is a shitload of people willing to accept Bitcoin. The only thing they are lacking is education. So what have we been doing as a family for the last years when we visit a certain place? Like, for example, Portugal. I went to the bar. I told the bar I want to pay with Bitcoin. I educated them on how to accept Bitcoin. I went to, for example, the restaurant, the fish restaurant, and I told them, hey, I want to pay my fish with Bitcoin. I educated them how to accept Bitcoins. I did that with bars. I did it with all kinds of places all over the world. Wherever I stay, I started to convince people, companies to accept Bitcoin because that was good for me and good for all the other Bitcoins around me. So yes, that costed me a little bit of efforts, but in the end, I succeeded. In Lagos, Portugal, there are now more than seven places accepting Bitcoin. There is Julie and Juna coming, just something. They are like, why the fuck is that wearing sunglasses? Because my eye is now really open and I look like... Uh, scream like so if people watch the video they see this ugly red eye so now i wear my sunglasses good morning, good morning. <laughs> they just finished sports again guys and the third possibility is all those debit cards for example the bybit debit card that gives you the possibility to stay in crypto till the ultimate end that you need to spend it i am in bitcoin or use the t or ethereum whatever currency it is on bybit 
And the moment I use that Bible debit card at a grocery store, that is the moment when my Bitcoins will be converted into Euros or Thai Baht or Chinese Yen or whatever currency it is that that country is using when I visit it. So you will be able to spend those Bitcoins at the very, very, very last moment because you use these Bitcoins debit cards. A lot of people walk by and they're like, why is he talking with sunglasses today? Yeah, they should see my eye. So that's the three solutions of why you can live in this world without a bank account. It is way more easy than you think. But you need to dig a little bit deeper than just trusting the old system of your you know, bank card and all that stuff. Yes, it will take some time to educate you. It will take some time to convince other people. And yes, it will also take some time to really understand that this industry has evolved way further than you think. Bitcoin is already integrated with MasterCard, with Visa card, and the banking systems all over the place. Of course, you will be able to use Bitcoin in direct ways, peer-to-peer, -peer, or with debit cards all over the world, guys. So that was the answer to those two questions. And then there was a third question. Didi, you just mentioned yesterday uh, that they can't freeze your Bitcoin. But there needs to be a moment that you uh, put your Bitcoins on an exchange or exchange them back to your bank and then they can freeze them. Yes, but I just explained there is not that moment. You can and you should, like we already have done, be in crypto all in. There is no reason for me to exchange Bitcoin back to euros or dollars anymore. I can stay fully in Bitcoin and use Bitcoin 24-7 all over the world. Direct, peer-to-peer, -peer, or through debit cards, or whatever possibility it is, I will be able to use Bitcoin. Why should I still exchange back and support those centralized entities that Bitcoin was created to fight against? Why would you still support that old-fashioned banking system that makes you even pay interest to hold your money there? You can stake on Bybit and earn like 10 to 14% a year on your USDT or 4% on your Bitcoin. Why would you still use those traditional systems if you have these new, high-tech, beautiful systems that are there for the people to use and to enrich ourselves? Why would you choose to stay poor? So for me, yes, people need to educate themselves more. And yes, I know that you're saying, yeah, but uh, Bybit is also centralized and uh, no, Blowfin is also centralized. Yes, they are. And if you don't trust them, use Apex Pro. Apex Pro is a decentralized exchange where you just connect your wallet, just your wallet, your ledger or your software wallet on your phone, to an exchange, straight on that exchange, without sending your Bitcoins to them. You keep your Bitcoins in your control and you just trade. Anonymous, nobody knows that you're trading and you keep full control on your Bitcoins. We have evolved already to so many things and people just need to educate themselves. Or subscribe to this video and maybe they will be educated by just watching a guy with sunglasses talking about Bitcoin bucks in their life. Now, that was the answer to those three questions. Now let's jump into the next part. And the next part, guys, is of course the inspirational part. And that inspirational part for today, uh, if you can even uh, take me serious with my sunglasses, it really feels weird to talk to you guys uh, with these sunglasses, but I just, just don't want to shock you. And no, I was not hit. It was not like somebody, it was not a fight. It was just me bumping into our, the side of our closet door, you know, which is this, yeah, with, with like wood. While I was getting up, I bumped again and it scratched this whole thing. I was lucky it didn't scratch my eye. Uh, but still, you know, it, it's really red at the moment. Maybe after the weekend it's back uh, to normal again. I can uh, do again without sunglasses, guys. Now, um, the inspirational part for today. The only thing you need to decide on is what to do with the time that is given to you. That's the only thing you need to do. You don't need to do anything else or think about anything else. The only thing that will lead to ultimate happiness is if you decide what to do with the time that is given to you. And not if you let other people decide what you should do with the time that is given to you. You should be deciding with that time. Because time is the most precious asset that we have. Of course I can talk about Bitcoin and any other currency and about gold, about all that stuff. But it's all nothing if you compare it to time. Time is the most precious asset and it's given to you. We don't know how much time is given, but at least time is given to us. By our parents, you know that created you, they gave you the time to live. And now it's up to you 
to decide what to do with the time. But the issue is that most people that you know will let other people decide what they should do with the time that is given to them. And that is exactly what not leads to happiness. That is what leads to sometimes short-term happiness, but at the end it will lead to a huge burnout because you are not living your life, you are living the life of others. You don't want to live the life of others, you want to live your life. And the only way to be able to live your life the way you want to live life to the fullest is if you grab that life by the balls and decide what you will do with the time that is given to you. Don't waste that precious time on all those things that other people expect from you. That's not important. What do you want out of this life? Do you want to invest in Bitcoin? Do you believe what I'm telling you about Bitcoin? And if you do want to invest in Bitcoin, why are you asking other people's opinions? Why are you asking the news readers that are like 80 years old and don't even know anything about Bitcoin? Why do you trust the banks that are fighting against Bitcoin, now embracing it, but now want to control it? Why don't you listen to yourself? You're smart enough. You can decide if you want to own Bitcoin, yes or no. It is you what needs to decide what you are going to do with the time that is given to you. Not all the other people, guys. I think it's very important that every day when you wake up, you start to realize how much of this day am I doing exactly what I want to be doing with the time that is given to me for free? And how big is the part of the day that I'm not doing what I want to do, but I'm just doing what others want me to do with that time that is given to me, what my boss tells me to do in that time that is given to me, what my friends tell me to do with that time that is given to me, what my parents tell me to do with that time that is given to me, what my family tells me what to do with that time that is given to me, with all those other factors telling you what to do with the time that is given to you. Every morning, wake up and tell yourself that should be the smallest part of this day, the biggest part of the day I will be in control. I will be the pilot of this flight in my life and then they will decide the direction and I will decide what I will do with the time that is given to me. That's the ultimate solution to becoming really happy in my opinion. Now, that was everything for today. I hope I did my real best with my sunglasses. <laughs> I hope it still looked a little bit serious, but if it did or didn't, then please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about all the other stuff in this video? And yes, uh, tomorrow again, probably my eye will be healed a little bit better. And if not, tomorrow I will be back. I'll be back with sunglasses, just like Arnold said. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow again, guys.